Hello everyone, my name is Clément Campo. My presentation is about some work my colleagues and I carried out and is called Transmitting Phase Align Signals for Array Steering with USRPS X310. During this presentation, I will first try to frame the problem with respect to the rest of our work. Then I will present the solution we came up with to answer that problem. And finally, I will show some of the experimental results we got before I quickly conclude. Let's start by the introduction. I'm part of the STC Research Group, which stands for Census, Telemetry and Communication. Among other things, we embed electronics inside gun-fired projectiles and ensure proper telemetry reception of the embedded sensor data. Hence, we use antenna arrays on a regular basis. So, in case somebody is not familiar with this concept, an antenna array is a set of antennas that are used to transmit or receive the same signals. Thanks to constructive and destructive interferences, the radiation pattern of the global antenna is more directive than that of the constitutive ones. Here, for example, you can see an antenna array made up of seven elements that are represented by these black dots. And we show also uh, interference figures. Constructive interference creates a lobe, while destructive interference uh, almost completely cancels radiation in other direction in space. And antenna arrays also allow to dynamically change the resulting radiation pattern by modifying the phase shift applied between each antenna signal. Here, by imposing minus 30 or plus 30 degree phase shift, the main lobe of the array can be steered towards minus or plus 10 degrees, respectively. This work was a part of my PhD called Development of an Array Steering System Based on Software Defined Radio. I had two USRPs X310 equipped with two UBX160 each, and I was to investigate the capabilities and limits of this setup with regards to array steering. Because of this context, the philosophy was to go as far as possible with the available commercial equipment and limit additional hardware to a minimum. To give you an example, one of the, the cool things we did with these USRPs was to, to use a four element array such as this one. Here you can see its corresponding PowerPoint shape. Put it on uh, perpendicular to a projectile flat trajectory and uh, we were actually able to electronically follow uh, the transmitter that was embedded in the projectile while it was flying at Mach 1. Okay, uh, during this PhD, the main problem we encountered was that phase shifts between USRP channel signals were introduced by the conversion chains uh, preventing proper phase alignment. Uh, indeed, uh, that is illustrated here, you can see represented an antenna array steered by uh, USRPs, which are represented by their conversion chains here. And uh, the array is uh, used as a receiver, so uh, the received signals are digitized and can be visualized in the uh, radio. A reference transmitter is placed uh, perpendicular to the array so that the, the planar wavefront that is received doesn't induce any phase shift uh, between array elements. So in that case, theory tells us that uh, we should observe uh, phase aligned signals on the radio. But as mentioned, uh, these conversion chains introduce uh, additional phase shifts and in practice, the observed signals are phase shifted. So obviously, uh, that's going to hinder uh, the equipment capacity to properly steer uh, antenna arrays. And things only get worse. At this point, uh, we thought that part of the phase shifts were induced by uh, the SDRP LLs. So we tried to repeatedly measure uh, the phase shifts between uh, the channels. That's what's shown here. Uh, the first channel is used as a phase reference and the three curves you can see here are the plots of the faces of the three of the channels and not so surprisingly we can uh, observe that these phase shifts are 
nowhere close to zero and that they do not remain constant uh, if we repeat the same measurement over and over again. So uh, there is some part of this phase shift that is random and we are going to need to uh, automate some phase calibration process if we want to properly uh, steer antenna arrays with these USRPs. In order to address this issue in case of a receiving array, we accepted the constraints of uh, placing uh, the transmitter aligned with the array before measurement. In this case, uh, no phase shift is induced by the transmitter position, so the phase shifts that are observed between the digitized signals uh, correspond then only to the phase shifts that we are trying to suppress. So we can simply measure them and compensate for them in software. This way, we could uh, code a software-only uh, phase calibration algorithm that uh, enabled uh, the commercial USRPs to properly steer antenna arrays uh, after this calibration was performed. We then remeasured the phase shifts between our signals before and after this automated phase calibration was performed in software. And uh, we, we did these measurements over the full frequency range of uh, the UBX160. It can be noted that prior to any calibration, uh, these phase shifts only tend to increase with the working frequency, while after the calibration is performed, uh, they are significantly reduced over the full frequency range. So uh, that's uh, what allowed us to properly steer antenna arrays in receiving mode using the USRPs. The problem that's going to interest us today is uh, that in the case of a transmitting array, however, uh, the phase shifts are added to uh, the signals in the analog domain and therefore uh, they cannot easily be visu visualized in software. Uh, since no information is uh, available uh, for, for us in the radio, that means that uh, this commercial setup without any additional hardware is uh, not suitable for array steering. That brings us to the second part of the presentation. It is the solution that we propose to address this issue. We stated that we wouldn't be able to achieve phase alignment uh, without any additional hardware, so that's what we did. The idea here is to loop a portion of the transmitted signal using passive RF components placed between the USRPs and the transmitting array, um, and build on the previous results to measure and compensate for, this, uh, for the phase shifts uh, in software. The, the principle is represented here. Um, we have available in GNU Radio uh, the digital baseband signal carrying the information we uh, want to transmit. This signal uh, will be converted to the RF analog domain and will suffer from the phase shift associated with the transmitting conversion chain. Um, so, part of the signal is going to be uh, looped thanks to the calibration circuit and we will not here uh, write uh, the terms due to uh, the passive RF components as they are deterministic, can be measured beforehand and uh, are just uh, going to make the equations harder to read. Um, finally, these uh, looped signals, we uh, go back to the digital baseband again and uh, that's going to make us available uh, an image of the baseband original uh, signal and uh, the phase shift induced by the conversion chains. So what we're going to try to do here is to isolate uh, this term that we want to compensate and uh, to do that, uh, we are going to need as a mandatory first step to remove that term from the equation. Here is shown a picture of the actual calibration circuit. 
um, we have in practice access to the four available transmitting channels of our two USRPs and you can note that we are only going to use uh, two reception ports um, to loop our signals. Here is shown the associated figure. Any number of USRPs can be represented by the transmission conversion chains. But independently from that number, only two conversion chains are used for the reception. During the first step, the signal transmitted on the first channel, which is chosen as a phase reference, is looped back to both receiving channels using a power split. This way, the two images of the signal which is transmitted on the first channel only differ by the phase shift induced by the conversion chain in reception. And by computing the, fresh, uh, the fraction sorry, shown here, we can then remove this term from the next equations. Once this is done, and while the first receiving channel only allows us to visualize an image of the signal transmitting on the first transmitting channel used as a reference, the second reception conversion chains is used to loop any of the remaining transmitted signals. Now if we compare the expressions of uh, the looped signals, they now differ by two terms. But thanks to the information we retrieved from step one, we are now able to isolate only the terms induced by the uh, transmitting uh, conversion chains and compute them so that we can finally uh, compensate for them in software. Finally, we can update the digital baseband signal to be transmitted with the term we just computed. This way, when the updated signal is converted to the RF analog domain, its new expression will look like this. And we can note that now the phase term is independent from the index i of the transmitting channel. And this should mean that the RF signals will be phase aligned when reaching the antenna array, finally enabling proper array steering. Okay, let's see some of the experimental results we got. All the presented tests use the four available channels of our two USRP X310s, so only four antenna elements. However, we use two antenna arrays, a four element linear array designed for a 2.3 GHz working frequency, and a 4x4 planar array used at a 3.1 GHz working frequency. The latter we use used as a linear array, as shown by the blue rectangle, so that we could compare the results with the ULA, and as a 2x2 two two planar array, as shown in red. This way, we were able to steer arrays of different geometries and at different working frequencies with the same commercial SDI equipment. So this is the photograph we implemented in GNU Radio for our test. Um, the USRP blocks give us access to the receiving and transmitting channels respectively. This block represents the signal that we wish to transmit, while this one includes the algorithms that I just presented. On a user trigger, the block will compute automatically the phase shift between the looped signals. It will also keep track of which transmitting channel is being visualized here at all times. And when all the terms are computed, it will automatically uh, apply the needed phase shift to the, um, the signal to be transmitted. And this means that the outputs of this block will uh, represent RF analog signals when converted that will be phase aligned when they reach the array. And completely independently from what we have presented so far, we can also apply to our calibrated signals in the software an array steering algorithm of our choice. In this way, we can make the array do whatever we need it to. And for our test, we used a beam steering algorithm in order to steer the array main lobe in the direction set by the user, just as, the, as in the animation we saw in the introduction. The first result plots the radiation patterns measured with the transmitting ULA at 2.3 GHz. Each colored plot corresponds to a given direction theta set by the user for the array main lobe. 
Measurement shows that for values of theta between minus 30 and plus 30 degrees, the main lobe is effectively centered around the value of theta set by the user. That is to say, that the lobe is steered correctly. The second measurement uses a row of the planar array as a ULA centered at 3.1 GHz. And once again, the lob is correctly steered towards the direction set by the user. So far, hence, results demonstrate that the two rays can be steered at different carrier frequencies with the same hardware. The last two measurements use the 2x2 planar array configuration. Radiation patterns are measured in two orthogonal plans to assess the system capability to steer the array lobe in two dimensions, and this one is referred to as phi equals 90 degrees. The main lobe is bigger here than for the ULAs, which is normal since we only use two elements per dimensions, but nevertheless the main lobe can still be steered towards the direction set by the user, as in the previous measurements. At last, we look at the same measurement, this time in the plane phi equals 0 degree. As lobes can be steered in both perpendicular planes, measurements then demonstrate that this setup and algorithms successfully allow two-dimensional beam steering. And this leads us to the conclusion. So, the work in this presentation is part of an investigation on the capabilities and limitations of the commercial USRP X310s and the UBX160 daughter boards with regard to phaser line applications and especially antenna array steering. The case of a receiving array was investigated in a previous study and led us to conclude the commercial setup alone was enough if the condition of knowing the transmitter location before measurement could be met. However, the proposed software calibration procedure used for a receiving array does not enable array steering for transmission, which highlights another limitation of the setup. In order to address this issue, an additional calibration circuit made up of passive RF components was added, and a calibration algorithm was implemented in the radio as a state machine. And with this new setup, we carried out measurements in an iQuick environment using two different arrays and demonstrated its ability to steer the array main lobes for different geometries and carrier frequencies with a single hardware architecture. This ends up my presentation. Thank you all for your kind attention. And if you have uh, questions, I will do my best to answer them.